folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have a uh, quick setup video for you on the Stinger 90 from Motion RC. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a guide as to what I did with my plane uh, to set it up to fly well. Now you don't need to do much to this airplane. 16 screws and it goes together. Put your battery and receiver in and you're off flying. But uh, there are a few things I found with it that uh, you know I, I set up and trimmed and tuned a certain way that seem to really make it fly uh, superbly. Now, uh, be sure to check out the uh, Motion RC YouTube channel and RC Informer for uh, the unboxing video and uh, a couple other flight demos uh, of the airplane. Uh, but otherwise, guys, uh, here we go with the setup guide for the Stinger 90. One of the first things I adjusted on my airplane was the, uh, the hole on the servo arm where the, uh, where the uh, aileron, the flap, and the elevator uh, rods connect. You can see I moved them, uh, I think, one hole in. I believe they were all on the middle for the flap, uh, middle for the aileron, middle for the elevator. I moved them in one hole. So they're not quite on the innermost hole, but they're just one out from that. I found that that gave me the perfect aileron deflection at 100% travel without needing any expo. And it also gave me really a very good uh, uh, flap travel for uh, my uh, takeoff, landing, and full flap settings. Um, again, aileron, flap, and elevator. Again, I move these all to that, uh, that hole that you see uh, right here. What that also does is it uh, increases the torque that goes to the uh, control surface, and it actually increases the resolution. When you move this uh, pin too far out, you get a lot of travel, and especially on something like the aileron and the flaps, you get a tremendous amount of travel and the control becomes more sensitive and then you need to dial down your, uh, your travel of your servo which you lose resolution on it and, that, and that's that the resolution is that fine control that you get out of it uh, as it's moved farther in so uh, I found that uh, again with these settings guys on the, uh, on the uh, not quite the inner hole but the next one out uh, I have the perfect amount of travel and as you can see from the flight demo uh, the aileron, the uh, elevator, and the flap settings uh, were perfect, and the plane just flew great here. When it comes to the rudder, I pretty much left that stock, as you can see right here. I uh, went ahead and used the middle hole here, and I'm pretty sure that's how it came uh, from the factory. And I found that I really didn't need uh, uh, any uh, additional movement out of it. Uh, to do the knife edge flight that you probably saw in the video, uh, I really used a full rudder for that. So. Um, and uh, I used about 30% uh, Expo, uh, which really helped a lot actually with the, uh, the ground steering uh, of the airplane and, uh, you know, taking off so the, the nose wheel is not too sensitive. Now, I did set this up as a six-channel airplane in the stock configuration, so uh, I didn't put my nose wheel and rudder on separate, separate channels. They're all on just one channel, Y harnessed together like it came from the factory. And I had plenty of steering, nose wheel steering, and plenty of rudder to do anything I wanted to. Um, I know that on the Motion RC site, they recommend splitting the two, but you don't need to. Uh, I'm just running this as a six-channel airplane. Um, uh, keep, keep in mind that uh, all these control throws that I'm telling you, this is how I set my airplane up. Uh, these are all personal preference, so set it up the way you like it. Uh, but, uh, but all these settings that uh, you've seen here, for the uh, aileron, elevator flaps, and rudder. Uh, really made for a nice, smooth flying airplane with plenty of control, as you could see in the uh, flight demonstration video. Once you get the airplane out of the box and the landing gear down, uh, there's a couple things I like to do, and in particular with this airplane, uh, since there's aluminum hub wheels on this, on a steel shaft, I usually like to put a little bit of oil right in this hub on this side and on that side. That'll really prevent the aluminum uh, from wearing out uh, quickly. Uh, the next thing I like to do is check the toe of the wheels uh, and the security of the screws on this. Um, I noticed with this airplane, as you can see in this picture right here, uh, I had one toe in and one toe out, just a little bit. Not a real big deal, but enough that if you're on you know, pavement, it can cause the plane to sort of crab down the runway, and then you have to steer. Uh, you have to you know, set your nose wheel so it's steered off to one, one direction or another. So to get the airplane running true down the runway, you want to have the wheels lined up uh, uh, parallel with the center line of the airplane. Uh, the easiest way to do that with this plane is really just adjusting this screw uh, right here. Basically, you unscrew this. There's also a screw on the back side that holds the, the gear door on. 
you unscrew this screw and you just remove the whole strut it just pulls right off the shaft and then there's a flat spot down in here and uh, with that uh, flat spot with a Dremel tool you can just sort of refile that um, flat spot uh, very slightly at an angle and then uh, reinstall this uh, with your set screw you can even flatten the tip of the set screw um, uh, to, to help keep this thing from rotating um, uh, there's also uh, two set screws one under here uh, and there's one under, under on the other side that, that goes in from uh, from both each side um, but those are hard to get to unless you remove this entire thing if you need any help with this uh, just check out, check out my uh, video on how to install set screws and it'll sort of guide you through uh, some of the tips and techniques for uh, for correcting this and uh, getting set screws installed properly. One item I would suggest inspecting uh, on your landing gear, on your nose strut in particular, is the uh, the wiring. Uh, I did notice that with mine, as you can see in this picture I'm going to put out, that uh, my wires were uh, really not in place. They were just kind of hanging around. Um, this you may or may not find, but if you do, it's not really a big deal. Really, you just want to make sure those wires are routed uh, just right into the uh, these two notches here and here. And uh, just put a little contact cement on them. You want them to have a rubbery type cement, so if you do need to remove them from here, you can. But, uh, but uh, you definitely don't want to leave them dangling around if they should come that way uh, in the box. Uh, you can see my plane's a little dirty because I've been out flying it, obviously. Uh, but uh, anyway, just get those wires routed in those channels uh, to keep them from getting uh, bound up in anything. Now one thing I highly suggest that everybody does when you get this thing, and this is what I did to mine, I do this to really all of my airplanes, uh, and this is pertaining to anywhere where you really have E-rings. And right here on the nose strut, there's three E-rings here. Just take a little bit of contact cement, just put it right over the end of this thing, and then just take your finger and kind of dab it down on there. Uh, what that does is it just locks the E-ring in place uh, and keeps them from... <laughs> really helps to keep them from falling off uh, while this thing is uh, you know, going down the runway and the suspension is moving, especially if you're on grass. If one E-ring pops out, you lose the linkage, the pin, and then you've you know, you got a, a downed airplane until you can get uh, new parts for it. So just placing a little bit of contact cement on each of those E-rings is just such a time saver and will keep your nose strut uh, together. Before installing your wing with the uh, four screws, it's a real good idea to, uh, to uh, check the security of the screws holding in the ESC, as you can see here. Um, the ESC is held in by a, a, a plank of wood with uh, two self-tapping screws that tap into wood, as you can see here. And uh, I found one of mine to be a little bit loose. So what I did was I backed out both screws, uh, put some CA in the wood holes, okay, and let them dry thoroughly and then went ahead and reinserted those uh, self-tapping screws. This is a real good preventative measure to make sure those screws don't come out because if they do, if one of them were to <laughs> come out right behind it is your 12-bladed uh, brand new composite fan. So, uh, and uh, that doesn't like uh, screws too much. So anyway, uh, it's a real good idea. Just check the security of those and make sure they're very secure uh, before we getting your wing on. Now when it comes to the battery compartment, uh, you really want to have something uh, to secure the battery with to the floor a little bit. This is an outstanding floor. The edges of it actually go under the foam uh, on both sides so it really keeps this plane uh, or keeps the battery in place when you're flying inverted nicely but uh, some guys like to use velcro along the bottom here and that's fine. Velcro your battery down uh, in addition to the strap. Uh, what I like to use, if anybody's seen my videos, you know I like to use this shelf liner stuff with some uh, double-sided scotch tape uh, that I put down first and then cut the right size, a shelf liner, and this really grips the battery because the side of your battery, uh, the bottom of your battery is really shiny and it uh, just grips to that well. And then you don't have to worry about yanking the Velcro off and getting the thing off of there. Uh, and it just works really well. Um, also, uh, I noticed that my battery strap was a little bit short uh, for my Admiral 5000 battery. And it depends on what battery you're using. You might be using a thinner one and the battery may, uh, the strap may fit around it just fine. But uh, for the Admiral 5000 uh, 6L uh, 50C pack here, again, it's a little bit of a fatter battery. So uh, uh, what I used uh, was one of these uh, Velcro one wraps. So if you need a quick solution for this, uh, you actually can get them at, uh, at Lowe's. And this is the package, Velcro one wraps. Uh, and uh, they're pretty, uh, pretty darn long, guys. And you just cut them to the length you need. I had to cut 
uh, probably about a third of this thing off, uh, but you can see it's a very nice, uh, thick, heavy-duty strap, and it's really, really, really long. Uh, you just uh, basically take the old strap out, slide this one in, or use your old strap as sort of a pull-through to get this in there, and then wrap it all around your battery to get it the right length you need it, and then just cut off uh, what you need. Uh, it's a real quick solution, guys, uh, and a real easy one uh, without spending uh, too much at the hobby shop. Uh, you can get these right at Lowe's. You can see here with the battery installed how I uh, put this thing in here. It goes in really nicely. I want you to sort of pull this thing secure, pull it tight, and uh, get it all in there. Uh, I usually use uh, something uh, to push this end down in, and then this end here, you actually can push all the way down in there, and the Velcro will actually secure in place right there and go all the way to the floor. So this thing is really uh, nicely secured in place, and then I'll usually just push this thing the extra piece down to the side. And again, I had to cut a, about a third of that off to get it to fit, but uh, this Admiral Pack fits in here perfectly with plenty of room to spare all the way around and makes, if you put it in this position, it it's, makes for a perfect center of gravity without needing to add any weight to this airplane. One last item I want to mention about the, uh, the connectors, particularly on the battery side, but you really want to check both sides is to look down the back side of the connector, as you can see in this picture, and make sure that there's enough solder in there. I did find one battery where they really didn't use a lot of solder to connect the bullet on, and uh, I had to actually take mine apart and re-solder it. So if you find this situation, just contact Motion RC and let them know. I'm sure they'll resolve it for you. Uh, but you gotta remember there's probably around 100 amps of power going through these connectors, and, um, and you really want a full solder joint um, uh, with lots of solder in there, just like you see in this picture right here. So just make sure on the inside that they're, uh, they're, they're secure. Now I went ahead and wrapped mine, as you can see here, with uh, some electrical tape, uh, just to clean it up and uh, you know, keep it from shorting and so forth, uh, which leads me to the other item. Uh, these are set up, obviously, to go red to red and black to black when you connect them. Uh, there is the potential for accidentally, mistakenly, connecting these in reverse polarity. Uh, you want to be very careful not to do that. Um, I had a friend of mine with the ME262 do that. It shorted, it shorted out the entire electrical system on the airplane. There was smoke and, and uh, melted wires and everything. So you want to be very careful uh, not to do that. Uh, uh, the reason this was done at Motion RC, the logic was for child safety. You notice I taped my bullets together, um, but, uh, but as they come stock, they're separate, so you have a separate red and a separate black coming off of here. And if you have two different connectors here, potentially, uh, you know, if a child ever got a hold of the battery, they, would, they may try to, to plug the two ends of the battery together and cause a short fire explosion and what have you. So uh, just be advised that's why these were done this way, and uh, they are nice and safe to use, but uh, again, the potential exists to reverse the polarity. So just make sure you get red to red and black to black, and uh, everything will work out just fine. All right, that concludes this video on the uh, Free Wing Stinger 90 from Motion RC. I hope you found this video to be uh, useful and informative. Um, this, is, this is a stellar airplane, guys. Probably the finest 90 millimeter sport jet on the market to date. It, uh, it went together very easily and really needs minimal additional items. Uh, the, the items that I point out in this video, you may or may not encounter these with yours. So, uh, but uh, I found that you know the, the, the slight adjustments to the uh, to the control surfaces uh, and the landing gear uh, and uh, securing the speed controller and the battery compartment really uh, really make a, a great jet, a stellar jet. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, check out the other videos on uh, RC Informer and Motion RC on this airplane. And uh, check this airplane out of Motion RC. Thanks for checking out RC Informer. And as always, we'll see you next time.